How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Tombstone's Takes. I am Tombstone, and I'm a librarian, and I like to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and interesting about books, books, books. Today, I'm coming at you with a review of Daphne by Josh Mullerman. Those of you who know, Josh Mullerman is the man who brought, brought us Bird Box, some of you might not have read Bird Box, but you might be familiar with the Netflix movie starring Sandra Bullock. That's the, the Josh Mullerman that I'm talking about today. He's got a new story right in time for Halloween. It's going to be released in September. I was lucky enough to get an ARC and able to read this and leave my review for you. There won't be any spoilers here, so let's get strapped in. So, the premise. The premise is that you've got the Sam Hatton High girls basketball team together. It's the night before the Summer League's championship game, I would say. And the girls are all together, and one of them decides to tell a ghost story about a local urban, urban legend about Daphne. Now, Daphne, she's a metalhead. She paints her face in kiss makeup. She wears denim from head to toe. She's seven foot tall. And there's all kinds of urban legends about her. You're not sure what she did. She's the vilest person around. She's the meanest person around. Maybe she killed somebody. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she said no to the basketball team and wouldn't play for them. And, the, and, and maybe not. We're not sure. But somehow, somewhere, people think that... The basketball team wanted to get revenge on Daphne, and they killed her. And ever since then, if all you do is think about her, she's coming for you, and she'll die. Well, she'll die. That's so stupid that she'll die. You'll die because Daphne's coming for you just for thinking about her. Get a load of that. Your main character is Kit Lamb. She's the star of the team. And her and her friends, they love to ask the rim questions. Anybody who's been a baller, anybody who's played backyard games, you know you got to ask the rim. The rim don't lie. If you make it, well, you know what happens. So Kit Lamb, in the midst of the championship game, asks, will Daphne get me? She makes the game-winning shot. And the rim don't lie. That sets off a chain of events that lead to suspense, horror, gruesome activities, and more. So let's get on with the good of this, of the book. The good of the book. One of the things that I liked best about it is that you're reading it one minute, you're not sure if anything's going to happen, and then all of a sudden you got this. bodies hit the floor. The bodies hit the floor and the bodies hit the floor and they keep on coming and coming and coming the entire book. You've got no, you've got, it's just nonstop. So the, it's fast paced. It's, it's gripping at times. And you've got a couple of characters, more than one that you may or may not root for. Now the bad. One of the things that one of the problems I've had with all Josh Mollerman books, and it's no different in this one, is the prose. He does this thing that I can't stand, and I haven't been able to figure out what it is, but it's never, it's annoying at first. I really start reading it. I'm like, what am, what am I reading? What's this dude, what's this dude even writing about? It's kind of, kind of clunky. It kind of feels a little bit weird. It kind of feels like the characters or the narrators aren't real people and that the rhythm is kind of off. And then the next thing you know, I find that his sense of story takes over and you're interested in what's going on. So although I didn't like the prose in the end, it's never stopped me when I'm reading a Josh Mollerman book from getting into the story and, re be and being reminded that the most important thing for me is story. So, the ugly about this book. Now, I'm gonna have to give you a personal detail about me. I love ghost stories. 
ghost stories. I love them. 100%, I can read a ghost story every day of the week. Now, one of the things that I actually dislike about critiques of ghost stories is that too often, every ghost story, when you read it, people attribute the underlying message to be uh, exploration of mental health, anxiety, depression, or descents into madness. And so many ghost stories are critiqued as such and explained away as such. And oftentimes when I hear those critiques or see them, I think, man, did you even read that story? You didn't even read that story. And if you did, you would see that there was no way to attribute madness, anxiety, nervousness, depression, mental health to the supernatural phenomenon that was happening. The reason I bring this up now is because Josh Mahler, Mahlerman, in the afterword of the book, and as you see in the narrative, explains how he used his own personal bout with anxiety as inspiration for this book. And you do see that Kit Lamb, the main character, she has anxiety and she's trying to deal with it in a, in a healthy way. And I think that it's good to have books that explore mental health issues in a healthy way. But at the same time, I think that if you read this book, you will see that in many ways it is a ghost story, but the supernatural phenomenon in the story is not to be blamed on anxiety. And I think that because there's such a help, help such a big dose of anxiety in this book that people might too easily fall into that. Now, the interesting, the interesting about this book in the afterward, Josh Mollerman also did discuss his love of basketball and he does a great job of incorporating pickup games, the baller life. If you like, if you like basketball, if you like the baller life, if you like pickup games, if you like organized games, he knows basketball. He weaves that into the story. It's interesting to see. I haven't seen um, many stories in the adult world about basketball. I, th I see a lot that happen to be YA stories or other stories that end up being about sports, but it was pretty cool to, to see that in this book. And it was really interesting to me also to see how Josh Mollerman created this character of Kit Lamb who does have so much anxiety, but at the same time, she's the star of the team and how she deals with that anxiety while dealing with something that she absolutely loves. And I thought that that was really interesting. And now on to my verdict. How many tombstones am I going to give this one? I'm going to give this one three and a half tombstones. Uh, for those of you who don't know and are unfamiliar to me, a three, three tombstones is a, a good, solid, entertaining story, one that I would recommend to somebody, somebody else. And oftentimes by their rating systems, they're either fours or fives. So there's, so this is, this is a, a an entertaining book that I enjoyed. It gets one tombstone for overall story and entertainment value. It gets a second tombstone because it doesn't shy away from the supernatural horror. It gets really fast paced and involved in it. It has some cool stuff with the Daphne urban legends and how those work and what was true in trying to find out who Daphne is and how she relates to the community. It gets a third tombstone for creating some interesting characters. Like I said, Kit Lamb was interesting with her anxiety, especially with how she dealt with it as being the star of the basketball team. And then there's a detective in there that I found was pretty interesting that kind of helped drive the story along too. And then it gets a half, it gets a half tombstone in the sense that um, kind of what it's billed as, it's kind of billed as this coming of age story, meaning that you could be pushing, although it has younger people, you could be pushing into some of the realms of, of the adult. And although it has some of that, it's 
still kind of feels a little bit more juvenile, a little bit more YA. So that's where the, the tombstone gets cut off. And obviously, I don't think Josh Mollerman is a prose whiz, so you lose some tombstones and things for some, some of that other stuff. But like I said, it doesn't really matter in terms of the impact of the story. I just happen to like some, some good prose. So there you have it. That's my review of Daphne, my non-spoiler review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a, a like and a subscribe. Come back for more. I've got some other videos that you can take a look at. And thanks for watching.